Good morning from a California perspective. Good afternoon from the East Coast. Uh, and uh, it's good to have you on this webinar, the August webinar. We pushed it off a week and uh, cleared the week after the convention, which is always a zoo week for me, that's for sure. It's busy. We have um, 1,450 people, locations on this webinar right now. Some are individuals, some are in offices. And uh, either way, welcome. Um, we're going to talk about very basic subjects for these next three consecutive webinars. Um, I'm going to share from the perspective of, well, really from two. One, if you're doing it personally, the things we're going to talk about, and how to do it, but also from the perspective of how to teach it. Both of these things, uh, you need to master these things personally, but you also need to master the instruction of them for others so they don't have to struggle with some of the things you have struggled with, or certainly they don't have to struggle with long. There are some fundamental mistakes, and most of them from misperception, um, that really cause you know, more of a challenge in these areas than it should be. It also causes more failure than should, people should be experiencing because of that lack of understanding. <clears throat> so I'm going to promote uh, how to prospect correctly, a um, couple of ideas about how not to do it, how to do a good prospect list, how to make contacts, set appointments, some of these things. We're going to spend the next webinar really focusing on making contact and controlling the point of contact so that we can help you accelerate um, the right kind of communication and contact with people. When these things um, came clear to me years and years ago, it literally caused a transformation in how we did the business and our success ratios. I mean, a dramatic increase. Um, in fact, when we're done with these three webinars over the next, next 90 days, I'll have gone through a process with you that took my base shot from recruiting, it was about a 20 recruit pace, to where um, seven months later we were doing over 100 recruits a month in the base and didn't go below 100 again for the next seven years. So with that thought in mind, um, as an, and with that as an introduction, Let's go ahead and, and uh, start talking about the, uh, what I'll call the, uh, the art and science of getting in and staying in the war market. <clears throat> Whenever I'm talking about prospecting or prospect lists or, or referrals at the point of sale, um, I have always taught and emphasized we need to become a referral obsessed. Every other way of doing the business is more difficult. Every other way of doing the business has less result. Every other way of doing the business has lower net point ratio. Um, it has weaker retention. All these things. The concept, of course, behind a referral is that it's in a warm market. And when I when I say warm, um, you know, I, well, I'll talk about that in a second. So I have never done a cold call in my career. Right? And it'll be, I mean, our 40, we're in and I in our 40th year, never made cold calls, never ran an ad, never took, um, you know, things that, you know, like, like resumes off the internet. Now, I want you to know you run an ad, you'll get some activity, you take a resume, you get some activity. But you'll never get the retention again, you'll never get the quality of recruit, you don't get any number of things that, uh, that you working in and staying in a warm market will get you. Um, it is more challenging. It's more challenging because it's harder. It may seem easier on the front end. I've seen people that run ads. I know a guy that ran ads, and, and I watched him walk across the stage um, at the convention and be the number one person over here in the county. But no leadership was developed. He never got a big pay shot. All he got was AMAs. You know, and it's because of failure of this kind of understanding. The most successful people in this company, and the ones that build long-lasting great organizations are true builders, build through trust relationships. How would we not? Right? The foundation of all good relationships is trust. 
And if you've ever heard me talk about this, no exercise. Cindy and I have been delightfully married and it'll be 40 years this December. <clears throat> 41 years with our courtship. We've had this wonderful, sparkling relationship. And the foundation of it is not love. The foundation of it is trust. We build the love upon the trust. As I begin to understand, I can trust her with anything and everything in my life. And she found out the same about me. We ended up building this world-class relationship. So I'll ask the question, without trust, what do we have? Well, this isn't a conversation about how to build a great marriage. Though, of course, these principles are true everywhere we go. And in, our, in my business, and your business, and our business, we want to have all the quality relationships we can possibly handle. And that means we've got to be building on trust. So I'm going to start with trust. And what do I mean by that? Is that when I'm building a, a company, I, and, and I don't know you, but if I know somebody who knows you, um, and you like them and trust them, then they can extend that trust to me. Right through the referral. Now I've got to go in and start building my own relationship, but someone and a stranger is now predisposed to feel okay about me because of the quality of the referral. Think about it. What is Yelp about? What is the whole concept of Yelp? And so you're looking up. You want a quality relationship. You want a quality restaurant. Tell you restaurant. You want a quality whatever. Dentist, pick it. I was looking at a new dentist, and guess what? I looked at the reviews. You know, um, my son and I, my Trevor, were looking at something, and um, and this particular service, right, had all kinds of five-star recommendations um, and ratings, which is fairly rare. And so this was a way of referring us and causing us to trust that this dentist, this restaurant, this whatever, um, would provide a good quality service, that they were good at what they did. I was looking up, literally, for my for her granddaughter yesterday. She loves rocks and gems and minerals. Most people like gems, but you know what I mean. And her great-grandmother had enjoyed that. And she feels that tie to her great-grandmother through those things. And I'm getting, I was looking for a store to take her to where I could help her start to build a collection of these things. And I looked at the reviews, and there were all kinds of five-star reviews about the place, about the service and all of that. Um, these are the things that people want to know about you and I and when we're coming into contact with them. Do we, quote unquote, have a good rating? Are we five star? Bottom line, it all comes down to this one simple question. Can I be trusted? Can you be trusted? Can we be trusted? And so the question again is, without trust, what do we have? Every year business we improve by building in a warm market. Now I'm going to get to prospecting and all this stuff. And you can turn strangers into friends. And we're going to talk about how to do that. Right? But the trust relationships are the fastest way to go. I, if I move, you know, I'm going to get ahead of myself. I'm not careful. So we're going to leave this slide at this point. Understanding that everything I'm going to try and do with you now in the future or 10 years from now, and everything I've tried to do with you and for you in the past in this realm, has been to focus you on getting in and staying in the world market, of becoming a referral set, of understanding the need and the desire you should have for building on trust relationship, and then a better business will be built in every way. So, but I'm still going to emphasize this a little bit more. Why stay in the world market? Very simply put, it's a better, you build a better business, you'll build it faster, you can duplicate it through others, right? There might be some amazing personality. Right, that some super prospector has. <clears throat> You'll be focused in the right market. Again, not dealing with strangers. It's easier. When I'm a huge fan of it. This is tough enough without making it harder on so. 
And it's more fun coming to stand up. Right? Better business, faster, duplicatable, folks get the folks in the right market, it's easier and it's more fun. Can't think of a bad way to do that. Now, let's talk about living a prospect list. This is the best way to prospect. Is in and through other people's markets. Um, somebody once asked um, my, a leader and a mentor of mine why we were so successful. What, were one, what was one of the things that really caused our kind of rapid rise in, in our first company and our rapid success? It didn't go rapid to me all the time, but compared to most people, it was fast. And, he, and this, this mentor of mine said, he either gets them or their market every time. Now, every, as soon as you use the word every, you know that that's not true. Nobody can get people. Human nature won't allow you to do anything every time. Right? But what he could have said is he makes a real, consistent, intense effort to get them, in other words, to recruit them, or to get their market. That means to get in, into their marketplace by referral every time. Now, that's true. And we consistently did that. that. And I taught that. that. Right? When, when I'm, I'm building, building a prospect with, with, with somebody, somebody, I'm emphasizing these very things I'm talking about with you. I talk about the power of a warm market. And then I want to help them get excited about doing a prospect with. Again, if you're sitting there going, when is he going to start talking about, all right, I'm standing in the line at Starbucks, now I want to talk to the guy in front of me. I'm coming to that. But I'm also going to tell you that that's, that that's a, fine to add one here and one there. But you, you've got to get into the multiplication business as soon as you can. Multiplication is faster than addition, right? It's not hard to figure out. 10 plus 10 is 20, 10 times 10 is 100. And so I like multiplication. So I want lots of people understanding how to do this. But I'm going to give you a few tips about building a prospect list with people. Building it yourself, if you're at that stage of your business right now, and we've got 2,476 locations listening to this webinar right now across the U.S. and Canada. And I want you to get as many of you inside your head and your heart to get this right. So I'm going to talk to you about how to coach somebody. And, I, and again, if you're building one right now, I'm coaching you. But how to coach somebody else as soon as you get your first recruit or you're already in the, in the building business and have a team. How you can dramatically improve your results, right, for helping somebody get into the prospect list. Instead of your own, own prospect list. Now understand, the number one enemy in our business, and really I guess these are two things, but they're joined at the end, um, is doubt and fear. And so we're doubting ourselves. We're, when we're brand new, we're doubting, is this for real? Um, the fear part, and I'm afraid of talking to people, this is not something I've ever done before, just like I wasn't. Experience in any of these things. I had no background in it. I put myself through school being a gardener. My dad's a little gardening business. And uh, then I was working in the athletic department of San Jose State. None of those things were about prospecting or team building or, you know, I did. talking to strangers and turning into friends. All of those things were new territory for me. And so I had lots of doubt, lots of fear, um, just like almost everybody that ever does an AMA or thinks about doing an AMA. And so, as we look at, and that's, of course, an associate membership agreement that's, you know, going on the line and joining. The bottom line, I've got to help you get excited about doing a prospect list. Just like if somebody was good at helping me, they get me excited about doing a prospect list. Now, the first thing I'm, I'm going to do with somebody, what I'm going to do with you, is give you lower or lower structure. I'm going to talk to you about staying in the right market. If we want above a certain age, we want... The overwhelming majority of our people will be in really deep relationships, marriage relationships, obviously preferable. Um, <clears throat> so that they have that support. We, we want them to be earning a decent income so they can afford what we do. You know, if you were a fisherman and you go out and you fish, you catch a little tiny fish, you take the hook out, and if you know, you try to fish and you catch a relation unless you're catching for food. But the reality is, is the little fish, fish you're going to catch and release them. Go back, swim around, eat some more stuff, get, get bigger. Right? You can't make a meal out of a little, 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 little fish. <laughs> but the reality is, 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 how does this translate to the business? I get somebody who's too young, not in a stable job yet, not in a stable relationship, 
That's, that's not, not something, something I can build with. with. Right? I mean, that's, that's kind of like, like building a house with bad concrete. concrete. You know, first first stress and it starts, starts cracking and falling apart. apart. And there, 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 there are occasional exceptions to that, but if you try to build with exceptions, you get an exception to low income, and exceptionally slow or no growth. Neither of which do we want. So you've got to stay in the right market. And I sell that to you. Now, I'm also going to talk to you about building a prospect list of 100 names. Now, one of the things I always I reassure people I do this up front almost before they even think of it themselves. By the way, if you're working on this list and you're putting down friends and family and people that you trust and that trust you and all of a sudden you do this thought in your mind, oh my gosh, what are they going to do with this list? Are they going to take it from me? Are they going to do weird things? Are they calling my friends? And I reassure that, get that doubt and then that fear out of their mind right away. And I say this to them, so that look. Before you even start thinking about, am I going to grab this list from you? Is anybody else in this team going to grab this list from you? I want to reassure you, this list of names is only useful with you involved in the process. With you being excited about the business. With you feeling good about what we're doing for people. With you feeling good about our relationships, our teamwork. That's the only way this list is going to be any good to us. And it's only true of you. If, if I wanted, wanted a bunch, bunch of names and addresses of people that I didn't know and who have no contact with me, no relationship, and no trust, I can go get a phone book that has names, addresses, and phone numbers. It's as much used to be as this list. If I'm building in Southern California, I get the LA phone book. It's got millions of names in it. Millions of names. Right? And you know, now we have different rules that do not contact lists and all that stuff. I don't want to talk about that. But if I had wanted to get a bunch of names of strangers, you can do that any time. But I don't, because it's no use to me. Because it, it, I lose the power of warm markets. I lose the power of trust relationships. So nothing like that is going to happen. If you quit, this list is dead. Unless you really like what we did, you decided it wasn't for you, but you recommended it to other people. Then it can still be of some use. But it still can't be of use without you. Without you feeling good about what's going on here. Without you feeling good about what we do and how we do it. So that relieves a lot of pressure, you guys. You want people to know. There's nothing we can really do with the list without them. So I give more law instruction, which means basic training about what the right market is. About building on trust relationships. About getting that list over 100 names. And making that work. But, but then, then I've also got, got to provide as a leader higher law inspiration. And the difference between lower law and higher law, they're both important. So lower law doesn't make you feel much emotion. It's about things and facts, and let's recruit them about 28, let's get a majority of married on your list, let's, let's have them earn a decent, have a decent job and a decent income. That doesn't, that doesn't fire us up, that doesn't make us feel passionate about what we do. The, the basic list, the longer the list, the better, because you know, the more people you have on the list, the less pressure is to get any one of them or five of them or ten of them, because you've got a big inventory, right? And that's lower law instruction. But now I'm going to do a little bit of higher law instruction. And then I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to do higher law instruction and inspiration around two languages, the language of helping people, for decades called our crusade. And the language of a better life, which is where our dreams are. We want a better life. And good people want to help people. Now, this starts to engage us in a very different way. Right? This is about now us feeling inspired. Us connecting with passion. Living a life with passion is a completely different kind of life. Living a life with detachment. Right, or where we're not emotionally engaged. The more passion we have in a quality marriage, right? The more passion we feel as a father or mother with our children. You know, the, the warmer and happier our life is going to be. I don't need to explain that anymore. Let's talk about the language helping people. So now I'm talking with you. And you're, you're a new recruit and we're sitting together. And I'm your leader, right? And here's what I'm going to do. I know that you're going to go back to work on that prospect list with just moral law instruction, you're going to start, start working on it. You're going to start eliminating names. Oh, I'd be afraid to talk to that one. That guy makes too much more money than I do. Oh, they, they, you know, I, they have a higher 
as, you know, all the, all the kind of people we actually want to talk to, you start screening out because of doubt and fear. So I've got to move you past doubt and fear. And I've got to get you passionate. I've got to get you feeling a strong, positive emotion about what we're going to do together with these people and how we're going to make a difference in their lives. So just how I'm going to do that. And so I'm going to, I'm going to call you Bob. It could be Jane. It could be anything, right? But so I'm now talking to you, and I say, Bob, as you work on this list and you're writing down names, by the way, I would have shown him the expanded memory jogger that would help him have all these different nouns and adjectives to help him come up with 100 names or her to come up with 100 names. But now I'm talking to Bob. And I say, Bob, as you start writing down these names, it's easy just to think of them as names. You're kind of playing a game, you're trying to get over 100. You know, one name, because you think of another name, you think of people you went to school with, the people you did your neighbors, the people that you work with, the people you have worked with, and all these other friendships you develop over time. You might play the sport, you got to know people that way. You know, all these different ways, right, that you've gotten to know people. And it's kind of a game that way. And But I want you to go deeper than that. And I want you to understand the power of what we do. When you, as you write down these names, I want you to remember something. When we sit down with people, almost nobody has a plan for how to become financially independent, for how to build security, financially, how to build well. They just we're just so busy and we rush around, and it isn't our area of expertise. And we're so busy with our work, and we're so busy with our extracurricular, with our families. When we have them, and having our children, and running our children to play soccer, or a piano recital, or whatever the heck it is, all these different things that are going on. And we have a way of not getting around to it, right? And in the average situation, we would sit down with somebody, and we help them get organized, and we help them start using their money more efficiently. We show them places where they maybe get some tax advantages, and we show them places where maybe they can improve their rate of return and have a, have a hope of that. You know, and, and we look at these kinds of things, and, they, and, and we protect families. Understand, on the average, we put hundreds of thousands of dollars in their future. And a bunch of these situations, we'll put millions of dollars in their, in their future, depending on how much time they have and how much, and how much, how much resources they already have to reorganize. But imagine, because of you, they're going to have hundreds of thousands of dollars that they're going to have in their future. I mean, multiples of their income, annual income, millions of dollars in the future for some of them. And, and literally, it's going to change their life. And you know why? Because you wrote their name down on the prospect list. Just because you wrote their name down. Just like somebody wrote down Rich and Cindy Thawley years ago. It changed our lives. Our friend Gordon, the guy who played the music at our wedding, I knew his son better, but he knew us. We were newly married, and he wrote our name down on the prospect list. He was a high school music teacher. He was part-time. He was only in the business eight months. I mean, he only recruited three or four people, made eight or ten sales, but one of them was us. He sat out with us. I bought my first little insurance policy. Life insurance policy, term insurance policy for sixty thousand. All we had was twenty five dollars a month. We could do. We started saving eleven dollars and fifty nine cents. But he showed us the time value money. He showed me the power of compound interest. It made an impression. Even that little amount of money, I was twenty eight years old, was going to accumulate, <clears throat> projected to accumulate to sixty five thousand. That's why I remembered it. Sixty five thousand is sixty five. Four months later, when I was thinking about cashing it in and taking Cindy to dinner with the four months that I saved, you could have a nice dinner back then with $46. I'm looking at the thing, and I made one of the most crucial decisions in my entire life. And I said to myself, all that time ago, 28, 20, 28 years old, right, 40 years ago, I said to myself, no. We need to start saving more money. And I sat on with Cindy, and we decided to squeeze another few bucks out, and we started saving $25 a month. I remember that was more than twice $11.59. I thought, 
Wow, twice, twice times, times 65, 65 yeah, 130,000, 140,000. You know, that, that seemed like a decent, decent amount. amount. I, I like the thought of it. You, you know, know why I had that thought? A part-timer. A part-timer is only in business a few months. months. Taught me the time value of money and the power of compound interest. And I started saving. Then when he delivered the policy, he invited me to a meeting. I didn't agree to go. He asked me three more times, and the fourth time I finally agreed to go. And Cindy and I went down, we sat in a meeting, it was a little meeting, two guys who were new at the business trying to explain it, and we made a decision to give it a try. We started making some good money part-time, a couple months later, we got licensed, we started saving more money, then it was saving five a month, then a thousand a month. And, and you know what? Two and a half years later, we had a million in cash and savings. You know why? A guy who played music at our wedding. A part-timer who quit showed us the power of compound interest and time value money. And got us started. That's the power we have. That's the power we have to impact lives. Did that help us? Are you kidding me? We sit here totally financially independent. Our kids got through college without debt. I was able to take care of my mom the 10 years she was in that. This horrible disease called dementia before she passed away. And we were able to spend what we needed to take care of her and to watch over her. We bought, built our parents, my parents' only house they ever built themselves across the street from our home out in the country. Secured their retirement. Got my mom out of the post office where she couldn't stand working. All these things watched over Cindy's parents the same way. Now we're watching over our grandchildren. My friend Gordon, during that part time, changed the lives of three generations. We expect to live to see some of the four. It's going to change their life too. That's how much they helped us. That company, their concept, that individual. That's how much you and I have the power to help each person we talk to. So when you write your names down, understand this can change their lives and it can impact generations. You need to feel. What I'm telling you here about what this means to help people, how much it can help people, the difference it can make. Now, I also want you to think about, as you're writing these names down, some of these people are going to business with you. Just like when Gordon wrote down Rich and Cindy Tholley, he thought, maybe I'll invite him down to hear about it. He was brand new, so it took him a little while to have the confidence to invite somebody, but he finally invited me four times. I probably would have never come down like an idiot if he hadn't reminded me he played the music in my wedding for free. He finally got tired of me saying, jacking him around. And so I said, okay. We went down and we joined. <clears throat> and then we studied, got a license. Then, then a few things happened. We recruited a few people, made a couple of sales. We got more and more excited about the business. Started making a good part-time income. Six months after we had our license, we said, no, I guess it was longer than that now that I think about it. No, yes, yeah, eight months. We had 30000 in savings. Doesn't sound like much to you maybe right now, but I was making 14400 a year working at San Jose State. I had two years' worth of my income saved in the first eight months starting part-time. Blew my mind. We paid off our debt. We paid off our Visa card. We bought a couch. <laughs> Sounds silly. That was my first... Those are our first two big goals. Pay off a thousand dollar balance on a Visa card and buy a couch love seat combination for eight hundred dollars. Our lives were already better. Having some money in savings to begin to dream that we can buy a house. Unbelievable. Then we saved more and started accelerating more. All because somebody wrote our names down a prospect list. We had a business going on. We had money in savings. We had a better life. We, did, we started thinking about starting our family. We knew we weren't going to be under a whole bunch of financial pressure. We were going to be in a situation where we were starting to control our time. Cindy and I were working side by side and not living separate lives. And it was strengthening our marriage and, and blessing everything about it. Stunning. All because someone wrote a name, a name down on the prospect list. As you write these names down, some of these people will have their lives changed like ours were changed. So don't just write down a name and think it doesn't matter much. 
You understand, we're going to put a completely different future in front of them. A better life. More in savings. More security. More peace of mind. Less pressure in the marriage. We're going to help them get their act together. Get out of debt. Really put their lives in a whole new realm. With a whole new vision. And a whole new future. So get this list as long as you can. Now, here's the question, you guys. Is that different than how you talk to somebody about their prospect list? Is that different than how you were talked to about a prospect list? If it is, then you need to make it more like I just did it. You want people doing a better prospect list, having more of a warm market to work with? You want to have a better chance of helping these people develop? Then you get better at talking about using the language of healthy people and the language of a better life. I hope that gave you a vision. All 2,828 of you that are listening right now um, in those locations, we got thousands of people on this call. I want you to do a better job helping people do a prospect list. I want you to do a better job with yours. I want you to understand how powerful this is when you get it going right. Right, and how much difference it makes to use these higher law languages. I want you to engage me emotionally if I'm a new recruit. I want you to give me a vision of how much I'm going to be helping people and how much better life I can help them build at the same time that that life is available to me. Now, when I'm working with you, back to lower law for just a second, I mentioned this, but I'm going to show you a picture of it. That's the expanded memory jar. It starts out with who's across the street. You know, different kind of thing. What does that say? Adventurous. Right? Always having parties. Ambitious. Apartment, ambitious. Apartment manager. Art instructor. Attractive. Bald-headed. Bank tellers. Barber. Basketball team. Excuse me. Baseball team. Then basketball team. Best dress. Best personality. Best sales. Best smile. Boss. Bought car from you. All of these things bring up names. So, right? Some of you use this. Some of you don't. That's nonsense. Let me tell you how it came into how it came into existence. Had a guy. His name was Bruce. He was an SMD. He was direct to me. Bruce is no longer in the business. Hadn't been in the business for years. But his gift has continued to give. His gift was this. He sat down out of frustration. He had made a serious leadership error. He was waiting on his people. As you wait, more and more people drop out. They get inspired with the thought of waiting because that's something they can actually do without any emotional involvement. He had 10, 11 people coming out for meetings. They're all telling him they would run out of people to talk to. He knew they hadn't. So out of frustration, he stayed up all he, he called it a emergency meeting Saturday morning in his house. And then he was going to do a pancake breakfast for him, he and his wife. <clears throat> so they all agreed to come Saturday morning for pancake breakfast with them and their spouses. And then most of them had spouses that showed up. And he stayed up that entire night, that Friday night. And he sat down and, and using the yellow pages to stimulate ideas on professions and everything he could do to get as many names down or many different adjectives, not names, and nouns that he could possibly put down to trigger a name in somebody. It was longer than this list. We actually cleaned up the list. He had a few things on there he should have had on there. But anyway, I won't, I won't develop that point anymore. But the reality was, he came up with this ridiculously expanded memory jar. First time I saw it, I, I saw the value of it. Right? And he sat down with those 10 or 11 people, and they came up with over 1,000 names that morning. After that breakfast. Over 1,000 names that they knew, and they were back in the warm market business, and they were back off of the races. You guys, this is a tremendous tool. But you just don't hand it to somebody. They tend not to go through it. you got to get with people and go through this list with them. You want to build this list. You should be doing it at the office or in their home. You know, you might be going in to help them do, right, you're going to do a needs analysis with them, and then you're going to help them with a the prospect list. Best that they do it with their spouse. Now I'm going to show you my original prospect list. There it is. On a drive up to a 10-year high school reunion, 
right? Cindy and I worked in my process list. They had told us to get over 100 names. We didn't have a memory jogger back then. It might have been a little one with like 30 prompts on it. On the drive up there, which was two hours, and then on the drive back, which was two more hours, we came up with the original list that had 128 names. We added a few more names to that, and then she typed it up. Then you'll notice at the end, we wrote a few more. Right? Look at all these names. Right? And we did that list. And my first big group of recruits came from this. And then we started working their prospect list and their referrals, and off we went to the races. I'm going to give you a crazy fact right now. Directly or indirectly from this list, we have recruited, our companies have recruited, and actually some companies have split off from us. When you add all this, we've recruited over 2 million people directly and indirectly off this prospect list. That's the power of a prospect list done right. Over 2 million people have done AMA. Is that, was that wild? Is that crazy? That's the power of working in a warm market. It's the power of going from trust relationship to trust relationship. But I sure hope you remember that conversation I just had with you about the language of helping people and the language of, of a better life, where I talked about how much it transformed my life, how much it has the power to transform other lives. That's just with our financial message, with the education that we provide. Then you take it to the opportunity, and wow, it could really change then. I won't tell you how much we saved this month, but the reality is the first question Cindy and I always ask ourselves as soon as we receive income from any source, stock dividends or capital gain from selling the stock or, or you know, cash flow from the, income from the business on commission, the first question we, we ask and then heard our financial system do it right away, boom. We got an amount, a substantial amount in here last week, and we first they decided they could send the whole thing in. We didn't need any of it to pay our bills. Bills are paid, and that whole amount went into savings. It goes immediately into a conservative account, and then we make a decision where we're going to go in our other investments. Right? But I want you to know that all started with a part-timer teaching me some stuff, and it changed, changed our lives. So... I want you excited about this prospect list business. I want you excited about prospecting, right? And I want you excited about building your natural market. I want you to understand you need to always have, whether you've been in this business 10 minutes, 10 years, or you've been in the business as long as I have, I have a dynamic, growing prospect list. I'm referring people constantly to the teams, right? I'm not building a base shop now. I've got to mentor big leaders about how to go from 50 million points to 100 million points to 200 million points to 500 million points, right? Just like we built our own hierarchy, right? You need to have back to your process list, the continuous flow in and out. You've got to make it a way of life. You learn through practice, and you can make practice fun. Talking to people, just learning to talk to people, and to get to know a little bit about them is interesting. It's fun. Sometimes you find out stuff you don't even want to know. But the reality is, it's interesting. It makes the day more fun. Right? All this connecting with people is powerful. I don't mean social media. I don't mean texting. Right? You may have a text. You may have an email. All that's fine. But I'm talking about really connecting at a personal level. Right? I love that icon that says life is about the people you meet. And it really is. Right? And I want you to understand this is what we're going to do. You're going to be a dynamic, growing prospector who has a dynamic, growing prospect list. You have a continuous flow in because you're always meeting people, getting referrals. You have a flow out because you're going to be talking about the business, about becoming clients and or teammates. You make it a way of life. My kids, now my grandkids roll their eyes a little bit. Dad's making another friend. Mom's making another friend. Cindy, you know, in the grocery store, we go to the most often, knows every checker. When she's walking out, let's say we started at one end, the farthest end, we're walking out with our groceries now toward the door at the other end. Every one of them says hi to her. Right? She hugs them. Right? She'll go down the row and hug a couple of them. 
How, how are you doing? Because that person lost her dad. And Cindy connected because she lost her dad not too long ago. Now, did all of this kind of stuff, I'm connected with one because her dad and mom had dementia. And, you know, people have gone through that, have a connection. And so we have all of this stuff. We connect with people, right? It's fun. It's a cool thing. Now I'm going to kind of get back to practicality. A little more of instruction. I'm going to show you what I call the big three. And what I mean by that is it's split into three pieces. Most people think confuse prospecting with inviting or prospecting with recruiting. And you shouldn't. Those are the big three. Prospecting, which is simply making a positive impression and making a connection. Inviting, which is done at a later date where you intrigue people and arrange to meet with them. Right? And then recruiting, which is where you're presenting the opportunity. Or it could be our product or services, right? There are three separate things. And this is one of the biggest mistakes made in the business. Well, now we're at 2,900 locations. This is one of the mistakes made in the business, you guys. Is that you confused prospecting with inviting, inviting with recruiting, or prospecting with inviting and recruiting. So now, let's picture what a lot of you have done, and I've done some of this too before I got this clear in my head. Imagine, imagine, you're standing in a, in a line, could be in a grocery store, could be in a tire store, like I said, could have been at Starbucks, could be anywhere, or you're just standing at somebody at a party, some social event, you're standing at somebody at a church. You stand next to somebody at a gas pump. You're both pumping gas, talking a little bit about your car. Whatever, right? However it happens. And all of a sudden, it's like, I want to talk to this guy about the business. I want to talk to the guy about the business. And you start to vibrate. And it's kind of like a, like a TV movie where this wine is increasing intensity. And the wine increases and increases, and then it explodes. That's you. Trying to prospect and buy and recruit all at the same time. Don't do it. People run screaming away from you. I would run screaming away from you. Most of us have experienced this with people who've done this kind of stuff. Take a breath. Calm down. You're not trying to, to invite and recruit. You're just making a positive impression. You're talking with somebody. You're being friendly. That's what prospecting is. So, I was at some events this last week, and I talked to some people, and I was friendly. They asked me what I did, and I deflected it. And I, I went back to asking about them. You know, and, and I just get to know them. I was working with two sharp young guys, talking to them, and they're out of uh, Arizona. And and I'm talking to them, and they, they have this little business they started up, the sharp young guys, both married, we're talking, I'm getting to know them a little bit, asking about their lives, asking about what their vision is for their business, what's their dream, what do they have to do, if they've done other ones before, how they work out, not that well, you know, and, and just talking. And we had a really good connection. And then they said, hey, we We'd love to talk to you again sometime. And I said, you know, ditto. And I handed them my phone. I said, put yourself in my phone. They both put themselves in my phone. I took it back, and after the names, I put P-L. Prospect list. Now my phone, when I put in P-L, will automatically list all those names alphabetically. In the notes, I put how I met them and a couple of things about them after I was away from them. Right? And now I had two more people on my prospect list. I didn't invite them. I didn't recruit them. I just added them a name. When I moved to a new area, the last time I built a base shop, a little over 11 years ago, <clears throat> I moved to a new area. My son, daughter and son in law moved to the same area. And we just went out over a couple of months and met people. We went out and prospected. The manager of the Bad Bath and Beyond, because he had a new house, we had to get some stuff. This place, that place, looked at a couple of cars. Didn't talk about yourself as the people that were looking at cars, too. They were easy to talk to. And when in restaurants, we talked to this person working in the restaurant. We talked to that person in the restaurant. We met somebody at a table next to us. And we talked to her and her children 
and and she said, and we ended up getting to know her husband because he liked to play golf. And the one next thing you know, end of two months, we had 280 names of people that were in the right age, married, decent income, and we started building. Over the next 12 months, we recruited 600 of them, not just them, the in and through them and other people. You guys, this is how we build a business, right? We prospected first. Do not feel the pressure to try and invite and recruit when you're just getting to know people. It's weird. You have to be weird. You know, you creep them out. You know, if it did work, it'd be one out of a hundred. You know, then that's too hard to do. Remember I said the business needs to be more fun? You need to make it easier? Separate prospecting from recruiting. Meet people. Hand on the phone. Say, let's talk again. Now, how do you do it? You call them. In fact, these two guys that talked to me already sent me an email this morning. That's why it's on my mind. They'd love to talk again. Right? I'll talk to them. Now, we're starting to get to know each other. We're building, wait for it, a trust relationship. Woo! Sound familiar? I'm not even inviting them yet. I'm developing. I'll talk to them again. They meet again. They're going to ask me again about what I do. Then we end up talking. I'll give you another example. Met a guy. His name's Dale. Met him in a barber shop that I go to. Nice guy. Thought I'd been a sergeant in Marine Corps. Served in Iraq. Mortar guy. Right? Quality human being. Lived, found out we lived in the same town. He had two children, a son and a daughter. Right? He had the dream of a ranch in, in Montana. But he's working now. I called him. We made connections a couple times by text. We talked on the phone, got to know each other a little bit. Still not talking about what we did. Right? I was going to be at a car show. I really like cars. I called him, hey, you want to go with us? He said, yeah. And we went. I'm talking to some more as we're riding together. He says, you know, I said, what are you doing now? He said, well, I've been doing this, got laid off. Now I'm doing this. I'm selling tools. My wife studied to become a therapist. I'm helping her get through school. I don't really like what I do, but I'm doing it. I need to find something I can do nights and weekends. <laughs> I said, is that right? I still didn't talk to him about what we did. Right? So I certainly could have. And I just asked him some more questions about that. I said, what kind of thing are you looking for? He said, I'm looking for something in sales. And I said, this is just that, right? He's jumping in the boat, for goodness sakes, for as far as the opportunity goes. And I just like the guy. I've got other reasons for wanting to get to know him. Right? Just as a, as a friend. And I said, you know what? When he was leaving, and uh, I said, you know what? We should probably sit down and talk about what we do. Because there's some he's opportunity in it. That for someone, he says, you know what, I'd like that. I'd love to talk to you about what you do. Now, guess what? That was inviting. Now, now we're arranging the meeting to talk about it. Now we present the opportunity in the recruiting phase start. Easy peasy, love and squeezy. I heard that in the movie once. And so, you guys, isn't that easier than what a bunch of you were trying to do? All right? And it's easy. You know, somebody's asking, what do you say when people ask what we do? You know what? This isn't rocket science, you guys. You overthink this stuff. You can work that out on your own. Sit down with a notepad and think about what you want to say. I'm going to give you a few ideas here in a minute. But you've got to understand these are three different things. That is, I do this one, then I go to this one, and then I go to this one. You say, wasn't that slow? Well, maybe the development's a little slower than just going for the throat. But I get a lot of people. I build real friendships. You know, I do a lot of selling and helping people, right, with what we do. Meanwhile, they're much more likely to do a good prospect list for me, to give me referrals, because i got a connection with them. I'm just friendly, making new friends. It's really fun. All right. Back to just prospecting now. I've already covered a lot of this. Right? Don't worry about the outcome when you're meeting people. You're not looking for an outcome. Sometimes you'll be standing with somebody, and you're right, you're just talking to someone, and they don't respond. Don't keep forcing it. Maybe they're not in a good mood. Maybe they're autistic. Maybe they're... Maybe they don't like your haircut. Let it go, right? If somebody doesn't want to talk to you, don't humiliate yourself trying to build, continue to build a relationship. 
catch and release. They don't want to. They ain't interested. Right? Be sincerely interested in them. That's why I dislike things about what I do. I'm on the financial services. Been doing that for a while. And then I'm back to them. Right? I have my own business. It's in the money business. Uh, you know, wealth management is other things. Don't worry about that. Now, how did you, how long were you in the Marine Corps? You know, what did you do with it? Where did you serve? You know, when you got out, how'd you feel? You know what I mean? All of a sudden, back interested in them about where they're going, who they are. You know, are you married? Have a family? Yeah. How old are your children? How did you meet your wife? How long have you guys been married? You know, what are your kids doing? They playing any sports? I just I ask questions. Situation appropriate. Family. And I'm talking to a younger woman. I said, I'm sorry I'm acting like a grandfather. I mean, I don't want to be weird. With all that weird stuff there is out there with people nowadays, I immediately put it into kind of a family situation. I said, I'm sorry I'm talking to you like a dad or a grandfather. Right? It's instinct. Right? I have a daughter and I have granddaughters. I almost don't know how not to, to ask questions like this way, you know? And, uh, and so it makes it, it normalizes it. It makes it non-threatening. I don't stand too close to people. You know, it's interesting. I was talking to somebody at the convention, and she got, she got in my space. And I, I said, well, would you mind taking a step back? <laughs> I said, you're in my space, you know? Because I find I just don't... I don't just don't let people make me feel uncomfortable. I come a step back. I try to make sure I don't get in, get in people's spaces that way. Right? I'm a good listener. Right? I stay relaxed. And then I might ask, do you have a card? I'd love to talk to you some more. Or, hey, put yourself on my phone. That's the way I do it. You know, I just hand them my phone. and We ought to talk some more. I enjoyed this conversation. You know, kind of, it was a nice connection. You know, and if they didn't want to do it, I wouldn't worry about it. I wouldn't worry about it, because most people do. I could, you put me anywhere, and I, and I could go build a list. Right? You give me a couple months, I'll have a list of a couple hundred people that are in the right market. That I've had a friendly association with. And then I would go move into the further connection, ultimately an invitation to sit down and talk, and then we'd, move, we'd do some kind of recruiting or presentation process. Right? Best advice I've got for you. Don't try too hard. Again, don't worry about the income. Just talk to people. Be sincerely interested. Ask questions about, like I gave examples of, family stuff. Be a good listener. Stay relaxed. Hey, give me a number. We ought to get together. We ought to talk some more. And they said, I didn't talk about getting together. I said, I'd love to talk again sometime. Don't try too hard. And then you drop them a text or an email and say, I enjoyed the conversation. Right? What happens when they ask you what you do for a living? You know, I've always been very comfortable telling people, I'm in financial services, insurance and investment industry, right? All the management is another one I use, right? I have my own business. When I do talk about it, right, when it, otherwise I deflect it. I don't get into it at, right when I'm talking to somebody who's still a stranger. I'm still, I deflect it and go right back into their life. I get into their life. I don't, I'm not bringing them into mine yet. I get them into, I get into theirs. That's why people like me, because I get into their life. If you're just talking about yourself, who's interested in that? Right? But when I do talk about it, when we're sitting down, these are the things I say. I'm in one of the few companies in this entire industry, out of thousands of them, that's focused on working at the family level. Right? At the grassroots level. And I love working with people who need help the most. I mean, it's a passion for us. We built our entire company, our business platform, in a way that we could work with what everybody else would call the little guy, right? The Merrill Lynch's, the, you know, all these companies, they're all good companies. But they, tend, they gravitate to the people that are high net worth. Nothing wrong with helping somebody who's high net worth. But I, we help people that only got 200 bucks a month to save, right? We provide the same quality of service the big guys provide, same quality of products and, and access to investment help. And you're only talking about that, security, security license. 
But the bottom line is, I love working with people who need help. The company's doing extremely well doing it. It's one of the most dramatic success stories in all of our industry. So we're focused on working at the family level, working with people who need help the most, and we're doing really well doing it. It's a really, it's a dramatic success story. I love building a business and doing something I believe in so much. These are the kind of things I talk about. Right? It's cool. It's fun. And so, run with this, you guys. Right? We've got 2,800, 2,900 locations on this, baby. Use this stuff. Right? If you already got something going that you think is working just good, back, go with that. But use the psychology. When it comes to getting an appointment, the second phase of it, you know, which is where you sit down and you're going to talk to somebody. You do a friendly follow-up contact, maybe two or three of them. You get your thoughts organized. Talk to somebody who's got experience here. You're coming back to strengthen the relationship. 80% of what you're doing with people when you get back with them is BRT. What's that? Building a relationship of trust. BRT, building a relationship of trust. See that little button that says, I love what I do. they got to feel that. It intrigues people, because most people don't love what they do, right? When I say you your thoughts organized, every decent hierarchy has developed a reasonable one-on-one -on -one recruiting presentation for presenting some of our stuff. But at this stage, right, it's just friendly follow-up, strengthening the relationship, talking some more about their family. If a child is graduating, someone is getting there, taking up the college, or Someone was going on a mission, or they were starting a new team, or they were trying out for their, the, the women's softball team. Yes, how did it go? Did they get on the team? How did they feel about it? How did the dance recital go? Right? When you're sitting down with people like that, you're keeping it simple and brief. This isn't a presentation to follow up contact, right? You could ask, what do you love most about your business? That's a question, right? That you could ask them, they could ask you. But I'm going to ask it of you now. What do you love most about your business in WG? What do you love most about what we do for people? What do you love most about our opportunity? Write those things down. Have them be things that touch your heart, not just your wallet, right? When I talk about paying off debt, sure that assumes I'm making money. But I talk about how much I hated being in debt, the stress of it, the bills, what that felt like, worrying about that stuff, and not having to worry about it anymore. Man, is that a better life. You see, now I'm back to speaking that language. That intrigues people. Now all of a sudden, doubt and fear go away, and they think, man, I'd like that too. So you talk about what we do for people and what you love about what we do. And you talk about our opportunity and what you love about our opportunity. What do you love the most about your business? If I couldn't stand you up right now, if we were all in one room and I was pointing at you, and, and I stood you up and asked you that question, and you mumble bumble, you couldn't get through it, then that we just identified an issue. Get that stuff down. Write it down. Get it clear in your head. Talk about it to people. Practice on people on the team. Practice on your family. Right? Share that stuff. Yes. Be an appointment maniac. In other words, I can wake you up any time, day or night, and you can be set an appointment with me. You can be inviting me to a meeting. This is the time to show your conviction about your company, about what we do, about what happens for people in our business. Show your conviction. That's what makes it work. And this is easier than you think, you guys. You can drop me anywhere. Put, see, that's me. Put a parachute on me, drop me any town in the U.S. or Canada. I don't have to get a license. I don't have to get a work visa in Canada or it's equivalent. <laughs> Just like if I, you're a Canadian and I'm dropping you here. Right? But you drop me anywhere. I'm ready to go. I have the right mentality. Do you? Do people need our help? Heck yeah. Do people need our opportunity? 
bunch of them do. Do you want to make a difference? I think you do. That's why you're here. Do you want a better life? Yes. That's why you did an AMA. That's the right mentality. People need our help. They need our opportunity. You want to make a difference in their life, and you want a better life. I'm going out there with that spirit, with that attitude, understanding how to prospect, just connect with people. Then I follow up a couple of times. Then I say, hey, let's get together. Now I'm going to share a little, just a little bit more about what we do. I'm telling them what I love about our business. And then I'm going to set another time, right, to sit down and really do a presentation. If they weren't interested, that's okay. I got lots more. I continue to prospect. The list is 200 names. And I keep pulling people in and pulling people out. I sit down with more, intrigue them. They're either intrigued and want to know more like Dale does now. Because I did Dale the contact. We made contact a few times after the barber shop. Decided we kind of like each other. I invited him to go see the car show with me. We enjoyed walking around together, getting to know each other more. Yeah. Then I said, hey, we ought to sit down and talk about it. He said, I like that. Now we're in the recruiting trail. But I was also just making a friend. If he hadn't had any interest at all, I wanted Dale as a friend. Do you see this? You need to build a new friend's habit. Constantly adding new friends. Get good at this stuff. And you'll find out life's going to be a lot easier. All right. That was the webinar on prospecting, prospect lists, and using prospecting, setting an appointment, and recruiting into a present, right? Our next one is going to be on inviting, how specifically you invite, how you handle the scenario of disaster with your invitation, how to follow up in between invitation and the time they're going to hear to sit down with them or they're going to come to a meeting, how you can help other, be, can help other people make contact in their market by controlling the point of contact with them, how to teach them to teach, help others control the point of contact, and how to really get into the multiplication business. We're going to have some fun with this one. This will be a great webinar, September 11th. I can never think that date without thinking about that time. Oof, 9-11. Okay. Yep. Anyway, we're going to talk about improving your business and fighting to control the point of contact. 9-11-2019. So, in a few weeks, we're going to be talking again. I hope this helped you out. We should sure enjoy showing it to you. Let's make it happen. we got lives to change. we got our lives to change. We got families and people we love that we need to help. We got parents that are going to need our help. We got children that want to get through school without debt. Right? Their grandchildren that need to help you. You ever need, don't even have them yet. But you know they're coming. And so, and you may have grandchildren. You want to help now. So let's accelerate. Fantastic. Yes, we do record this. I'll be doing more. I'll be doing further podcasts on it. And we will, we will record and video and do all this stuff and be pushing this out to the field. Let's go, team. Love you all. Thank you for being in business with us. I appreciate you. Can't wait to be talking to you again. Take care, everybody. Let's go make some good things happen. Go connect with people, will you? Go do some prospecting. Have some fun. Enjoy the business. Let's build better lives. Bye.